again. We tend to remember crucible finals, don't we? But you know, the early rounds can sometimes produce just as much excitement and intrigue at the start of Snooker's annual marathon. And so it proved in the early rounds in 1982. We're going to relive a first round match between Steve Davis and Tony Knowles. Now, Steve turned up that year as the reigning champion, the world number one. It was the first of his six crucible crowns that previous year, and he had dominated the season leading up to the championship. He'd won six events, including the UK and Masters titles, and he was widely expected to complete the set of Snooker's big titles that season. He was up against a qualifier from Bolton, who had been to the Crucible before. He'd been knocked out in the first round by Graham Miles 12 months earlier, but he'd yet to win a match. As it got closer to the championship, I started to feel the heat a bit. I had a bad performance against Ray Reardon in a, a smaller event, and I think I lost 5-0. And all of a sudden, I'd start to just unravel mentally. Um, and that, effectively, was the worry of defending the title. The fact that I'd been so dominant, I wanted to keep that dominance, and I started to feel the heat. Well, that was pretty evident early on when Steve fell 3-0 behind. Something was up with the Romford Robots starting motor. Well, as for Tony Knowles, he'd had a bit of a slow start in his professional career. He'd taken over a year to win any match in a professional tournament. But the good-looking qualifier from Bolton did not seem to be phased in the slightest by playing the world number one today. This is frame four. One. He's unlucky with that. Bowles certainly not being kind to him at the moment. Just take the cue ball back down behind those three colours. No, he's not. He's going behind the green. One. 
with a wry smile that tells you he's not happy about that either. Oh, that was a great shot. He's back in trouble. Well, 
Four. Sorry, no. Another foul. Just doesn't understand it. Seven. a little too far. All square then, 16 points each. Seven, Steve Davis. Looking to the ceiling for something. Tony playing extremely well, some solid snooker.
One, Steve Davis. of brilliance is just missing at the moment. Steve fighting the bowls with almost every shot. Seven. Eight. Him in front. Fourteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. Keeping his cool. Well, four. Tony knows. Well, well that's extraordinary. How cruel this game of snooker can be.
39, Steve Davis, 24. And that's the type of thing that the world champion is fighting. Him 30 points ahead. 15. Fifteen, Tony Knowles. That was the ball he wanted. So once again, Steve Davis finds himself in trouble. A great performance here by this 26-year-old Daltonian, Tony Six. Knowles. The world champion yet to chalk up a frame in his defense of the world title 82. 11. making few mistakes in these first four frames. 26. <coughs> Steve obviously a little disappointed. Steve leaves the arena and it is Tony Knowles who goes out for the interval happy in the thought that he has a four frames to nil lead. Inexplicably, Steve just wasn't at the races so far. He hadn't settled and was now desperate to get a frame on the board and quickly as he mulled over proceedings at the mid-session interval. This is frame five.
Well, gradually the pattern of the game is changing, and I think Steve is trying very hard to break down the run of the balls that uh, Tony has had, and with which it mu one must say he's played very well indeed. And Steve was open mouth there, <laughs> thinking he'd gone in off again. Uh, and that's how to do it. Steve Davis. Well, it did go in, and he's on the black. And this time, the remaining three reds, that little bit easier. And it's amazing what a little potting success will do to a player. Even of Steve's calibre, he's now letting the cue go through the shot and getting his pots nice and clean. unfortunate. Still, Steve has a convincing lead now. 83, Tony Knowles, 8. So a pretty relieved 24-year-old Steve Davis taking on this uh, man. He's not a youngster, by the way. He's two years Steve's senior in Tony Knowles. But with a frame on the board, surely normal service would be resumed now. Well, that uh, was a mistake by Tony, but whether he's left one, I wouldn't say this is an easy pot, but it's there to be taken. Three. One. 
four. Looked as if Steve might get back in there, but bad miss on the pink. A chance for Tony now. Well, he's got to do a little dink of a swerve here to get the pink. And he's not too happy with it. Risky shot yeah, at uh, the stage of the procedures. And this, of course, is when uh, Tony must really fight hard because uh, Steve Davis is desperately trying to claw his way back into the match. said he won't be happy with that shot. And another chance for Tony. Just went in, but he is on the black. Twenty-eight. 
Won't be mine. And Steve must be wondering what he's got to do. He's made a mistake and he's being made to pay for it. He missed an easy pink. 35. This so far is the highest break of the match. Fifty one. Hoping to split the reds up there, but just missed them. And it's no good. Steve Davis now requiring a snooker. Four nil down before I got my first frame on the board. Then Tony Knowles made it importantly 5-1 after that. And I, I just, in the end of the session, was just wanted the ground to swallow me up. Yes, yeah, sheer agony and no little embarrassment for Steve at this stage. And his grip on the World Championship trophy is loosening at an alarming rate by this point. He has a chance, though, frame seven, to launch a counter-attack. He may have left a red on here. Thin cut in. And he goes in off. How unfortunate. Things just aren't going right for Steve tonight. So that's pretty good for Tony. One, Tony knows. So fifty five behind, and Steve in trouble again. This is a day that uh, Steve will want to forget. Steve now requiring snookers. Four, 
Tony Knowles, 63. Chance of a snooker here, I would think. But he's even missed the snooker. a little more like it but he's got an awful lot to do yet Again there, Tony can swerve this. Snooker would have been much more advantageous. And then Steve concedes. Six frames to one. This looks like a possible chance for Steve here. Just hold for the black. One. And Steve very unhappy with that shot. Meant to hold the white in a more of a direct line with the corner pocket, but has to take a risk here. Well, he got out of trouble there, and he's on the black, but he has to play these shots very carefully.
Once again, Steve misses. And so does Tony. near the top pocket there but didn't go in Steve really must be very unhappy with those misses. It's not at all like him. goes on the highest available when it won't go on its own spot. And again, Tony is punishing Steve for a rather careless miss. And that's a little indication that uh, Tony is really beginning to feel confident. are so positioned he could clean up this frame. Good shot there. Tony goes into the lead and 42. as Vera was saying, every opportunity here to make sure of the frame.
Well, he wanted to get just the other side of the blue there. But uh, he shouldn't have much problem with this. Should have got that because he's not safe yet. Only now it's fifty five, Steve Davis, thirty two. Seemed rather a risky shot, perhaps looking for a quick way to finish this frame. But perhaps you should be a little bit more patient. Steve trying a snooker there, but it hasn't come off. And Tony probably just plays safe again here. Well, many, many a time we've seen Steve. Steve clear up from a situation like this now. I wonder if he can do it. And what a game this snooker is. There you see the probably the greatest player of the day. Once that little bit of confidence goes, makes all the difference in the world. Fortunate for Steve that I don't think we've seen Steve play like this for a long time. He really is off form tonight. again. Should have capitalized on that. Another chance for Steve. a bad miss by Tony and if Steve does clear up here my word he could uh, he could rue the miss because one always has the feeling that if Steve Davis begins to play Six. Tony might find it's a very different game Rumble. 
not a good shot at all. Difficult, but what will he leave? Leaves. Possibility of another snooker, but he's just missed it. There may be a pot on here for Steve. Not easy, but could leave the white safe if he misses it. A really vital ball is red and Steve has left it on for Tony. Tony's got to make sure of this. Which he does. One. really put Steve wow. in trouble again. Well, and that surely tells us that tremendous blue there surely makes it 7-1 to Tony. And what an unfamiliar situation for Steve Davis. So 7-1, Tony Knowles. Three. 
four. Four, Tony Knowles. Well, if ever Steve Davis needed to win a frame, it's this one because it's the first player to ten that wins this 19 frame match. Seven. Well, I think he's a little unfortunate there. At uh, the black won't spot. <coughs> really beginning to play with the sort of confidence within we know he can play with and uh, my word he's really held himself together very okay. well because whatever happens this has been a tremendous match of pressure for him 29. one thing we're sure of whatever happens whatever the result it's going to be sensational because Steve Davis, who started 5 to 2 on to win the tournament, 36. will have to win everything tomorrow if he's going to pull this match out of the fire. Yes, with the build up which Steve has had, Jack, um, it must have been particularly tough for Tony.
6. Well, he played a very deep screw there, and he just didn't get hold of it at all. Oh, what a wild one from Steve, not at all like him. Seven. And he only scores seven. for a very good shot. Really tight on the bottom cushion. Tony Knowles, 47. Steve Davis, 7. Tony having a little talk to himself there. He's still not satisfied. One. Seven. Fifteen. Bad miss Steve from Davis. Steve there. He usually gets those. And they're all on here for Tony if he can keep his nerve. One. Dangerous, but he got away with it. And that was a very important red because that put Steve in trouble again. Thirty-eight points the lead. Sixteen. And this is surely going to be an eight-one lead for Tony Knowles. And what a day Steve Davis has to face tomorrow. Sixteen. 
saying, turn it over. Thank you. Four. the desperate effort by Steve for a snooker there knowing that it's a pretty hopeless task but one cannot take away from Tony Knowles a truly magnificent performance about the black so that is 8-1 to Tony Knowles a truly magnificent performance and Tony shakes hands with Steve what a session for Tony the crowd were all excited that there was a, a shock on the cards the crowd were loving it baying for blood. There was me, the ice-cold robot, falling apart in front of their very eyes. And the crowd were getting more and more on Tony Knowles' side, and I really went into my shell and, and hated every moment of it. Yeah, quite a story was brewing, wasn't it? The defending champion, Steve Davis, 8-1 down overnight. I wonder if either man got much sleep that evening. When they came back the following day, we knew we were in for either one of the greatest comebacks in the early history of the Crucible, or one of its biggest surprises. Foul four, Tony Knowles. Well, the most unusual start there by Steve Davis. Tony Knowles, a nice competent Six. start. Well, Steve's got a slight problem here. Not easy to get back to the bolt cushion.
And Tony Knowles seems to have started exactly the same way this morning as he finished off last night. Looking very relaxed. Steve a little hesitant so far, but naturally he's got everything to do and can't afford many mistakes. Just having a look to see if the black will clear into the corner pocket. And Steve actually played there to stop the black from being potted and uh, he's watching 16. with bated breath there but unfortunately it will spot. 16, Steve Davis. <laughs> And of course, in simple terms, Steve Davis needs nine frames and Tony Knowles just two. But of course, Steve has nothing to play with at all. He's got to virtually win everything in this session. A colossal task ahead of him. There's no easy way back for Steve to get down to the bolt cushion here. He's well, he went for the pot as well with a hoping for safety and 
and of course they'd be very relieved about that one going in because uh, the balls are in such a position that if that one had stayed over the pocket then Tony was in a very good position to score for you. One, Steve Davis. Now then, Tony's in a bit of trouble here because they're, all the balls are open and he's somehow got to find out one of these reds. And not only hit a red but leave Steve safe. was a lovely shot from Tony. Played to perfection. Under hit that one a little bit. Eight. Can go down possibly a steady pot to leave himself on the pink. Which is what he tried to do. Eight. And now then. Certainly Steve Davis would make short work of these in normal form. One. And a very good chance for Steve here, I'm sure that he's got a very good chance. He was slightly careless there. He's left himself a little bit to do here. Could have been much nearer the black. And in the match as yet, Steve Davis hasn't really put together any break of it at all. And one gets the feeling that this is what he needs to, if he's going to really get back into this match just to get a little bit of confidence back 17 17 Steve Davis and in his preamble to the shot there Steve has carelessly touch the cue ball so it's a foul shot and that's a let off for Tony one well Tony didn't play that one very well but I'm fairly sure that he'll just take the blue here and no, he's re uh, not an easy shot, so uh, yes, I think he, he'll opt for taking the blue and just leaving it tight behind the green ball. Could roll up behind the green, but the blue is the easier one to play. Steve in trouble again.
Al, four, Tony Knowles. And John Smyre, the referee, uh, declares that that was a foul shot. And it does seem that Steve Davis is doomed to a, a really bad match. Nothing seems to be going his way at all. Now Steve seems completely out of sorts with himself. Again, that safety shot it much too thick and leaving Tony half a chance. One. And again, a very, very good shot by Tony. Played to perfection, perfect on the black. Now he didn't look very happy with that one because he didn't play it awfully well, but Still a red on, but not as easy to get position as it might have been. And that was a cunning shot by Tony there. He almost covered the reds with the yellow. He was just a little bit short of strength. So Steve has a reasonably easy safety shot here. I think he just played a Four. little tickle on the two reds, but unfortunately just missed it. Four, Steve Davis.
and a very nice little cannon on to the red there beautifully played and that could well be a frame winning shot Nine. And that six from Tony puts him 17 points in the lead, which means the green and the yellow will be enough to make Steve only able to draw with the balls on the table. Steve there, I'm sure, wondering what's happened last night and today. Steve Davis now in deep trouble again wanting snooker and what a good frame Tony has played in this opening of the session refused to be hustled and forced the game at all he's let Steve make the mistakes knowing that he's got all the pressure almost a snooker but of course Steve can do very little other than really struggle and try and get the snookers required just two snookers required And that's just where Steve doesn't want it. What? Well, he tried very hard and Five. concedes the frame. Five. Nine frames to one. Tony knows.
And in this very important frame, Tony now has a chance, dare I say it, to finish in a blaze of glory. Four. So far in the Five. match, uh, it's been very noticeable that no breaks have been made, but I'm sure that uh, Tony won't be bothered about that. And Tony there almost saw that ball drift 18. and just missed the knuckle. safety shot from Tony to put Steve in trouble again with all the reds scattered yes he's I think he's trying to just play to this ball on the side cushion here just push it to the top cushion leave his white on the back cushion here and he's played it fairly well be pleased to get out of trouble And Tony's playing some good safety shots here. Uh, Steve puts him into trouble, and Tony promptly plays a good one and says to Steve, Now, well, let's see what you can do next time. And on one of his good days, they would have been going in. Now he's left Tony a chance over the corner pocket.
Six. Well, this is the second opportunity Seven. Tony's had to put a score together in this frame. Just a little over strength on that shot. But, uh, he should get this all right. 13. Table seems pretty fast on the bed. Embassy World Champion, seeing his title fade away. Tony, of course, is quite a prolific break maker. He's, he's a superb player, but um, I don't think he's really worried about breaks at all in this match. He's played a very, very good game. He's played a real hard match game of snooker. And when the balls run like this, there's nothing you can do much about it. It's just going to happen that way and the only way to do it is to pot the balls and Steve's having that much trouble at the moment. Well, ten minutes of play we've had in this frame and an indication of Tony's excellent safety play. Steve hasn't managed to pot a ball so far. Thank 
dans 3. And with the ball set as they are, I think Tony's being very sensible. He's 42 nil in front. And he wants the balls to remain a safe so that it's a real tight frame. And now is he going to be tempted to have a go at this one? I think the two reds near the green won't go in the pocket, so it could be nearly a shot for nothing. Well, a little smile came onto the lips of Steve there as Tony potted that excellent red and I think that was an indication that uh, he feels Five. that's it. Six. At least he has the consoling fact that he's a very young man and still has a long time to go in terms of a playing career. Tony just overdid the side a little bit there, played for the outside red of that little cluster. One. Eleven, Tony Knowles. Well, I think all Steve can do here is just drift behind the black and hope that he really gets tight. Well, a possible chance here, but not a good one. Well, he's 52 points behind and not a lot of reds to play with. Well, 
Well, he's oh, on yeah. the red. I think that red will just go past the green. His problem is to get position on a, a colour to disturb those three reds on the right-hand side cushion there. Yes. And he's now a little bit of luck. He wants to pot the yellow. He's perfect on the yellow to hit the reds. And let's see if he's going to have a bit of luck this time. And I think that's the first time that the balls have really gone for Steve today. Played it very well and a very good chance here for him. Nine. And Steve now moves to 22 points, 31 behind Tony, so he needs the whole of the balls to win. 23. And now he, he's finished just about perfect on the pink there. Just off straight. shot from Steve could really put him in with the chance of winning this frame. Valley desperately needs to get on that yellow off the black and this is not as easy as it looks. Got to force the cue ball a bit here. And that was the problem. You see, he had a lot of side on that cue ball. And this gives Tony the opportunity. little kiss on the brown there I think really seals the fate of Steve Davis Perfectly on the blue and fourteen and a little wave of the hand indicates that the Embassy World Champion has been defeated by Tony Knowles in a superb exhibition of match snooker. Yeah, Tony Knowles had created one of the greatest upsets in Crucible history and he went on to prove that it was absolutely no fluke either. He reached the quarterfinals that year and indeed came back to reach three semi-finals at the Crucible. It was, in some respects, the launch pad to this young man's career. He would go on to win two ranking titles and indeed reach the dizzy heights of world number two in the world rankings. But that famous day... This was his reaction with David Vine. Tony, many congratulations. And I'm just wondering which was the more difficult, uh, playing this morning or getting through last night? 
Well, after a big uh, victory last night, uh, a big lead, you know, of 8-1, uh, it's hard to say how you're going to play this morning. And uh, I was glad to say that I got right back into the game again early on. Most people, I think, would have thought that last night with that uh, lead, uh, you'd have just gone back and sort of sat down and read a book or something, but I gather you didn't. No, no, uh, we ended up at the local nightclub there uh, last night. <laughs> yeah. Until what time? <coughs> Until about two o'clock, half two. Is that the way you relax? Uh, well, it was good to get away from the game, you know. It wasn't bad. <laughs> It was an awful feeling, having to suffer sitting in your chair at the championship when the underdog is battering you is a horrible experience. Yeah, Steve's shock defeat against the underdog, Tony Knowles, is still talked about even today. We never let him forget it. Yes, the defending champion knocked out in round one. But as it turns out, it's just one of many, many exits for defending champions. In fact, even to this day, no first-time Crucible champion has ever returned the following year and successfully defended the world crown. Strange. It's called the Crucible Curse, and it's still very much a factor in today's championship. Well, we hope that you've thoroughly enjoyed our little walk down memory lane. I'm sure Tony did. I'm not so sure about Steve, though. <laughs>